You all again to the fifth part uh, of this series of debates. Now for the ones that you just joined, I'm Marta Perez Alveniz, and with my colleague Capucine Leroy, uh, we are uh, acting as facilitators for this conversation. I would like to introduce you uh, the uh, participants that are joining now. And Sophie Delay is a French architect based in Paris. The specificity of her practice is to be almost exclusively dedicated to social housing on the French ter territory. Such a clear mission allowed her to develop a thematic method to challenge established patterns and provide generosity in social housing. The square room is the elemental unit and the starting point uh, for each project. It is a process that allows her to address broader issues uh, such as the domesticity and flexibility of housing and its relationship to the city. Welcome to EPFL. <laughs> and welcome to EPFL. Thank you. And now, Sophie, if uh, you could share your screen and um, show us your presentation. Uh, so, thank you, Paolo, for inviting me and uh, thank you, Capucin, for our discussions. I'm very glad to meet uh, Cominal today. So, first of all, I would like to tell you that um, at the office, I work for 15 years on the same subject, the collective social housing and uh, nothing else. And for me, it's a triple commitment because with housing design, our cultural discipline can meet the needs of the people and society and this in a fundamental way. So we always try to the standard, the very constant program of uh, housing to free up the ways of life. And with the collective dim dimension, we try to imagine the way to share the world in a more virtuous way than today. And with a social one, we work for everybody, so it's fantastic. So I love this subject, the collective social housing, but I've got a lot of problems that uh, stimulate me and stimulate the design too. About housing, uh, how can I define the domestic spaces without meeting the inhabitants and just uh, the institution client? I'm in a different case, case than uh, communal. So I try to design evolutive special arrangements that are as uh, ininterpretable as possible so that they can live in a way that might even surprise me. And about collective part of the project, how can I be the most generous as possible in my place of architect uh, to give them something that might uh, even surprise them, something that they can't think individually. So, I always try to introduce the common good uh, or a new, new possible links between them or a new quality given to a larger scale. And about the modest French condition of uh, social housing, how can I be generous with uh, such a limited budget and surfaces and uh, with all these uh, infernal French standards and regulations? I try to do it by distributing the quality differently than expected with uh, parts of the project that are very luxurious uh, gift and other parts that are more cheaper. So year after year, little, bit, little by little, I realized that uh, strong links were being woven between all the projects I designed and that uh, five topics were emerging. And in fact, each of them is an answer to the question I asked to myself. I called uh, these topics sharings, evolutivity, protocols, patterns, and interpretations. About sharings, um, for me, it's uh, important to protect uh, the intimacy of each person in a housing, but on the condition that it allows an opening to the others. So they can share their common territory. With evolutivity, uh, we believe that to be sustainable, housing must be able to change when the life changes and adapt to each household uh, lifestyle and future ways of life too. 
The protocols are the decisive acts that we take and that override all the other decisions that we have to take when uh, we do the projects. And these are, you'll see, it's a very luxurious gift that we introduced in uh, the project. The pattern is a sort of a combinatorial exercise. It's a way to uh, of relating individual elements in a collective construction. And at the end, interpretations, um, because when, we, when an, an operation is delivered a few la years later, we go back to the site and uh, we meet the inhabitants and we draw the way they interpreted the spaces with their uses. So we learn a lot from this. You can see here our portfolio, uh, which uh, the project in one side and the topics in the other one. So, it is a project where we seek to destandardize housing. Uh, it's 40 housing units in Dijon. We converted the 40 flats into 240 square rooms. And in fact, changing the unit of reflection to provide uh, premises to provide a new perspective or, uh, for thinking and working on the project and to distance that. And in addition to this uh, little scale reflection, for urban reasons, we were interested in uh, this uh, small size of the room because uh, it's, it allows the project to be both uh, massive and delicate because it's situated between the small house and future high buildings. So it's effectively uh, solve the particular urban reasons. This uh, principle of rooms was a sort of strategy to never use the words housing or dwelling during our discussion with the clients so we could experiment. And all the square rooms are equal, non-affected, except for the kitchen and the bathroom, which are half fixed room. And one of them is uh, outside, it's a loggia or, ter or a terrace. So inhabitants settle as they want in the flat. And depending on the of life, they can choose to free up views, uh, different views through the flat. And through the day, the space can evolve according to the people who are there. And in fact, we designed the facet from the inside and not from the outside. It's on the inside that we put the money. So furthermore, we reserved about 10 rooms for a shared space on balcony to the public avenue. So in this new project in Lille, urban circumstances uh, led us to ask what could be the real collective dimension uh, of the urban apartment building. And for this project, we decided to build uh, higher than expected. We want uh, to dialogue with the neighboring uh, public building. And uh, we had a chance because uh, our building will be the only residential building that emerges from uh, the neighborhood. So. It's an opportunity to share the privilege of living with a, a great panorama view on the city. But we've got a problem because the urban regulations did not uh, allow us to build so much spaces. So we had to remove some housing from the project and by taking off some flat, we create a sort of a common diagonal walkway in the building. And this walk leads to a panoramic terrace on the top and connect uh, all the inhabitants uh, to each other. So the space is equipped and lives like a sort of little village. And for this project, we worked uh, with the whole of the institution services, building builders and managers, and it was uh, interesting. On each floor of this oblique way, you discover the city in a different way. And you know, uh, 
taking off, removing a dwelling uh, is more expensive than leaving it, in fact. And we didn't have the budget uh, for this uh, generosity. So we took the cheapest materials possible and uh, painted them with a solid car park paint, the floor, the wall, and the painting. So here is uh, the end of the course, the view of the, from the terrace. So living is not um, restricted to the envelope of, of the dwelling. And here, each uh, inhabitant can meet together and live with the panorama on a daily basis. So their social and physical territory is uh, enlarged. Now, another project in Dijon where the gift is a domestic special generosity. Here, we were in a new distri district whose ambitions were to allow for future urban densification. So each architect had to let buildable a uh, part on, uh, of his plot. That was very interesting, but impossible in our case because uh, our plot was too small. So we interpreted this constain differently by proposing that uh, our building could accommodate the densification in its own envelope. So we we've made sort of uh, two big clauses. So we proposed uh, 32 voids that could be filled in the future. And each dwelling has a double high section that will allow for mezzanine for exam the dwellings or floors to multiply them. And this device gives a feeling of a great freedom. In fact, we feel like uh, we are in a spot hall. It's sort of a special luxury. And perhaps um, that densification will not happen after all because it's generous, but uh, in passing, we have been allowed to propose uh, the extraordinary for housings. So you can imagine that the principle is, uh, this principle is a luxury that the budget did not include. So everything is very raw, every material is uh, used for what it is. So the project is in uh, its simplest expression and uh, we used uh, cast in place concrete which is the cheapest technical uh, construction in France. And uh, every flow was uh, hidden by the workers' hand sprints, which were made with uh, stencils made in their, on their own hands. And thus, the details of the concrete recovery was uh, as archaic as possible, a bit like the drawings of the hands on the cave. So. Their position is random and leave the sort of little surprises for the inhabitants, little mysteries of a story that preceded them. So it's a way of magnifying the ordinary aspect of the, this building material. So I show you just to finish a small project that we are starting now. And today I'm working on this nice project uh, with a group of 12, 12 uh, households next to Paris. So for the first time I can meet the inhabitants and that's why I show you because I'm with communal. So it's, uh, it's an opportunity, but it's funny because uh, we began during the first confinement. So we couldn't really meet. So I decided to open a letter correspondence with them about the way each family considers the meal time because I wanted to connect all their private kitchen together to make a sort of large exterior common bar. And it was a way to meet them and to provoke a meeting around, uh, around uh, domestic issues. And they sent me uh, pictures of, these, uh, of their mealing time and in fact, in these projects, I'm also very interested in uh, which way, in which part of the project uh, inhabitants can uh, intervene. 
without abandoning my responsibility as an architect. So I determined the place, the places to the choice I make, the place uh, for the choices of the group, and the place for the choices of the different family can make. So it's a um, delicate, but uh, in a sort of exciting balance. So I make assumptions about uh, how we're going to divide it up uh, between us. It's a sort of uh, experience and it's a new adventure that begins now by uh, meeting in a bit during design. I thank you. <laughs>